So in this section, we're going to be talking about um, DNA replication. So there were a few people. One was um, Fred Griffith, and he experimented with um, virulent, meaning lethal, a lethal bacteria and a non-lethal bacteria that he injected into um, mice. And, you know, obviously when the lethal one was injected, of course it would kill the mouse. When the non-lethal was injected, the mouse, well, it's non-lethal, so it didn't kill the mouse. But his groundbreaking um, experiment was that when he had killed the lethal version, the virulent version, he had killed it, but then mixed it ahead of time with the non-virulent um, and injected in the mouse the mouse would die, even though the virulent was already dead. So how did this um, connect with the non-virulent to kill the mouse? So um, obviously there was some genetic information transfer and that led him to do some DNA work. And then last section, we talked about Shargoff's rules, which was were basically the four bases inside of DNA where A always pairs with T, so you can reasonably assume that there's about the same amount in a body cell, and G always pairs with C. So adenine pairs with thymine and guanine pairs with cytosine, and then there's weak hydrogen bonds in between them so that they can break apart easily. So you get these together in a twisted ladder that has deoxyribose and phosphate on the side and um, the sides are held together by much stronger covalent bonds. So this is a drawing of the double helix, the twisted ladder. Um, so the sides of the ladder are the phosphate and the sugar and the rungs of the ladder are the nitrogenous bases, which are A, T, G, and C. So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and it's made up of nucleotides. And this is really important for you. Um, nucleotides are made up of a phosphate group, a five carbon sugar, and a nitrogenous base. So I wanted to show you, and here's a visual of that, Um, I wanted to show you um, a few pictures from your text. So DNA is replicated using what's called the semi-conservative model. The semi-conservative model is this. In this picture, you see two gray parts of DNA. And when you split them apart, one gray side goes here and one gray side part of the double helix goes there. And they're split apart. Then they're copied. And so each set has one of the original and one of the new sides. This is called semi-conservative. So each, each um, part gets something new and has part of the original. Um, so the semi-conservative replication is basically when one parent is divided into two and is paired with one of the new daughters. So um, first, to make DNA happen, um, as far as replication in eukaryotes, the way, well, here's another um, picture of that. This is from Watson and Crick, were the ones that, that discovered this semi-conservative model where each one gets a new part, so there it is in pink. Um, it's important to note in um, DNA replication, what DNA polymerase does. DNA polymerase adds DNA nucleotides to the three end model of the template, and then it also uh, repairs mistakes. So I wanna show you this picture and go over this for just a minute. So in DNA replication, DNA will unwind at a certain point of origin. So let's explain this picture. Here's the point of origin where this is unwinding. Well, as this unwinds, the DNA will always um, replicate from the five prime end to the three prime end, which, you know, it's going in this direction. These are the arrows 
um, that it's replicating in this direction. Well, if the um, unwinding started here, the origin was here, then this little piece of the um, copy is going to just be able to continuously move along as this continues to unwind. So as this continues to untwist and unwind, this can just keep mo moving forward and forward. However, because the origin is here, and because replication for this lower strand cannot move in a backwards direction. If you see the arrows, the arrows are there because it has to unwind in this direction for the bottom strand um, from the five prime end to the three prime end. And um, if you don't get that yet, um, I ha there's some cool animations on this. So on this side, as this point of origin starts to unwind, the, this has to be done in little fragments. So as this half starts to open up, it'll like throw down a piece and say, okay, we're gonna build to there until we can connect. Okay, we're gonna throw down a piece and we're gonna build till we get there. Okay, more of this unwinds. So it has to go in these little segments called Okazaki fragments. So one end gets to continuously be like nice and long and neat and straight and go on and on and on forever. This other side has to be done in little segments called Okazaki fragments. And there's, I put in the Canvas class some, like a video on that that just shows you a quick animation of how that works. So new bases are added um, as it goes along to complementary strands and it's and one's made continuously and one is made in pieces and then the primers are removed these little green sections will be removed and the DNA will be held together by ligase and let me see I don't know that I have a good picture of that but these will all be connected by um, DNA ligase so the five prime end is always has an exposed um, phosphate group that gets exposed. I don't know if I have a good picture of this. Um, so we might move past this. Um, this is part of mutation. So I want to explain that. So a change in the genetic code is called a mutation. So anytime there's a change, and those changes can be fixed um, sometimes, and sometimes it is not fixed. So mutations are random events that are impossible to predict. You don't know when a mutation is going to occur. And mutations can be caused by mistakes in the DNA replication um, and DNA alterations that occur during meiosis, during crossing over and DNA damage because of things like UV light or exposure to different chemicals. So incorrect bases are removed and replaced with the correct um, pair as the polymerization, as things move along. These mistakes are generally um, fixed, corrected along the way. Um, and some mutations don't affect the person or organism carrying it, but they can be passed to the next generation through sex cells, also called, you know, your sex cells are also called your germ cells. An example is early onset cancer, like breast cancer or colon cancer. Those are ones that are genetic and can be passed on. So again, most mistakes are corrected if they're not um, then you'll have that as a permanent change in your DNA sequence. Um, another example of a mutation um, is that's repaired is the change to the genetic code. Changes in the code can change a protein shape, which is vital to its function. So, for example, um, some sometimes there can be additions made um, to the genetic code, like insertions, and we'll actually go over that in the next section. So some mistakes can be corrected and some cannot.